You did the roof on that or something? No, uh, Eric was just telling us someone's trying to give away money. Oh, I know. Case. Case has money to give. Oh. I'm looking for it. I'll go there. Yeah. We have money to accept. Okay, can you see us, Jane? Okay. Yes, I can go. Sorry. In the old school days, I'd pass the motions to the councillors to sign, and then I'd after it carried sign it i'll just fill in their names i have i brought my motions like so okay I'm okay so I'll, when i see them i'll just fill it in and save so much passing around because we're up to you doing that that way now for two years, so. okay okay <clears throat> we still have one minute and why are you hiding behind the tv pardon why is Anne hiding behind the tv because she's not in this meeting oh oh right fair enough yeah this isn't the government of adjustment. Yeah. Okay. I was uh, working on my roof before I came with putting a new roof on. And I've been on holiday since Friday. Well, I took Monday, Tuesday off. So I was like down to the wire. I was like, gotta go. Showered. I've never shaved so fast. I probably cut myself six times shaving. <laughs> Well, there's no blood, so you're well. Safe. Good. If you see me <laughs> leaking, let me know. Just point. Okay, good to go. Okay. So uh, at this time, we're sitting as Committee of Adjustment of the Township of Bonfield for a short meeting related to one item on our agenda. So I would take a mover and a seconder to open the Committee of Adjustment meeting, moved by Councillor Viancor, seconded by Councillor Foisey, that the Committee of Adjustment meeting be opened at 6.45 p.m. All in favor? Carried. Any disclosures of pecuniary interest? None. Purpose of the meeting is for a minor variance application and it's uh, numbered A2-2022. The owners are Cleo Degani and Ron DeVoe. And the purpose of the variance is to allow for a residential dwelling size of 53 square meters, 576 square feet instead of the required 75 meters, 807 square feet, as per zoning bylaw 2012-49 in a rural zone on part of lot 30 concession one, part one on plan 36R 14558, Township of Bonfield Boundary Road. We've received comments from the North Bay Mattawa Conservation Authority. Have we received any other comments from anyone since the agenda was produced? No. Okay. I haven't been given anything, so that's all we have. Okay. Any of the committee members have any questions related to the application? Yes, uh, Councillor or Member Foyce. It is minor because it's seventy-one percent of the area of the bounty. That's always been a debate about what is minor in a minor variance. Sometimes, it, if you're talking land, it's feet as opposed to hundreds of feet and so forth. So. Uh, yeah, they're calling it minor. It would seem from the uh, report that the planning manager has drafted that the uh, initial intent was to create a, use a different provision in the, in the uh, zoning bylaw for a private club that was discouraged because, it, because of its location and the fact that it's a residential lot and other things. So the compromise seems to be that uh, the application for the smaller 
dwelling size is what they've fallen to. And this would be a permanent residence? It, it's supposed it's to be? What it's described as, yeah. Part of that um, official plan and zoning bylaw that we have that it calls for 807 square feet of uh, home. There's been a lot of change since 2012 related to tiny homes and uh, backyard suites or granny suites as they used to be called and things like that. So I'm sure under our uh, revision of that, we're gonna have to look at, at the size of dwellings. Um, I was surprised in speaking with an uh, individual from Bolton, which is in GTA Northwest Toronto area, airport country. Uh, their minimum square footage down there was shockingly uh, 2,200 square feet. So uh, he thought we had tiny houses up here. I thought ours was, I thought ours was a thousand. I said, you know, our minimum's a thousand. He says, well, ours is 2,200. And uh, he says, you have tiny little houses up there then. So uh, this, uh, this house of 576 square feet is that much smaller again. Yes, uh, Councillor, Member Lagasse. I do have a question. Um, I'd like to know if, if uh, Sabrina could be attending these, these meetings, the Committee of Adjustments. Yes, she probably should be. I don't, um, she's working with um, some assistance that we've obtained for her in getting up to speed on our uh, <clears throat> different planning matters by the name of um, Jeff, 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 Jeff Salentano, who uh, the CAO had arranged for some cross training because he was a former planner and so forth with calendar and other municipalities. So I'll uh, mention both to Sabrina and, and Jeff that uh, I'm certain it's in her job description that attendance at these meetings is part of the requirement. Thank you. Any other questions related to this application? Just a comment, we accept the reduced square meter. Is that going to be like setting a precedence? Like anybody could ask for a lower? I would expect it could, yeah. In that um, each one would have to ask for this um, special consent under the uh, Committee of Adjustment, which I don't believe there's any fee for in our current system right now to prevent or discourage it. Because that's really small, like comparing to my mother's house there. It's, it's, she has a small house and it's really small. Mm -hmm. I just don't understand what they mean by private club. But, uh, Hunt club, I guess. I think myself, the, the, I have no idea, but I think the intent of this was just to build like a, a pretty fancy hunt camp. And when the bylaws didn't permit that on a residential lot, Detroit. We're trying now just to build a small facility for that, basically a residential cottage, I think is what's happening. And the, and the camp idea was in the idea of camp, you know, but... Uh, they call it a club. Yeah, okay. I'm only speculating on that, but it makes it's sense. sense. No, yeah. Considering where it's located and everything, I mean, there's no waterfront there, there's nothing of, you know... Uh, yeah any camp type uh, draw to it. Okay, if there's no further questions, I take a mover and a seconder to uh, further along. I'm going to move by Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor Vinecourt. That minor variance file A2-2022, Cleo de Gagne and Ron DeVoe be approved, subject to the Committee of Adjustment decision attached here too. Last call for any questions related to it. All in favor? Carried. I'll just get every member to sign it, please. I'll be in tomorrow to sign it, Audrey. Okay, thank you. 
No, There'll be other ones matter. from planning as well, Jane, coming up later. It's going to get a choice anyway. There we go. Good evening. Good evening. So then I would take a mover and a seconder to adjourn the meeting. Moved by Councillor Corbett, second by Councillor Lagasse, that the Committee of Adjustment meeting be adjourned at 6.56 p.m. All in favor? Carried. Okay, I will end the meeting, Jane, and I'll, we will be back with Council. Andre, do I go off and then come back or just stay No, on? just stay there. It's hot enough here. I know every time I come here, it's like so wet. What did he do with his uh, the motions for the meeting? Is that done? Is that done under there? I'll ask them. Uh, you can put that in the chair if you want. Which one? No. Unless you bring your own cup. Oh, you don't have no more. Yeah, there's nothing to drink. Just check, maybe. Uh -huh. on the chair? Well, I was going to say you can just put those there on the table just to give you more room. What happens if you need it? So, yeah. How's that? Thank you. Were you on holidays last week? Yeah, four days. How was it? Um, well, my kids got sick. We were in a trailer. Oh, I've been slept the whole night and half a day. I'm kind of sick. Thank you. Fever, sore throat. Uh, that sucks. And then he woke up. We have my whole family. We do it every year, same week. Blah, 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 blah. We have a trophy for fishing. And when you have the trophy, you have to bring it to every family function. So you get to eat first. Oh, all these fun. things. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's awesome. All right. So I'm only fished one day. Anyone? Uh, anyone? Yeah. That's awesome. Good for him. Yeah. So you get bragging rights. You, you bring the trophy to everything. Yeah, absolutely. Okay. I'm starting the recording again. Find any more water bottles? I see. I know. We have a policy. I right? forgot about that. There should be a bunch of them right there. There might be warm. Yeah. There's like two cases of them last time I saw. I was from Canada Day. Uh -huh. okay, how can I go to Zoom? What did you do with the motions that you filled out for the last meeting? I never got them before, but if you'd like them now, 
I just. Uh... No, no, the ones for the committee of adjustment. Yeah. Okay. Right. I have a whole stack of them at home. Oh, I don't so need the other ones. I just like need for tonight. <laughs> that's, Thank you. that's my uh... fire starter. Yeah. <laughs> the files. Please. Okay, you're good there. You don't want to be a movie star? No, you're on camera. Did you turn the furnace on before we came here? Pardon? Did you turn, turn the furnace on before we come here? <laughs> turn the air off. It's hot very fast in here. Uh, humidity seemed to roll in about three o'clock this afternoon too. Outside, yeah. like it just was a nice uh, You're going to sign all of these after? Okay. Yeah. Stack of them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I looked after you. You did. Thank you. Yeah, <laughs> going by my watch, yeah. and it's reasonably precise. <laughs> I got seven. Okay. Okay, whenever you're ready then. All right, uh, good evening everybody and welcome to our council meeting of Tuesday, August 9th, 2022. I would take a motion to open the meeting. Moved by Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor Vinecore. This meeting be opened at 7 p.m. All in favor? Carried. We had meeting minutes from three meetings, the regular meeting of July 12th and two special meetings on July 26th, 2022. I'll take a mover and a seconder to accept those minutes. Councilor Corbett, seconded by Councilor Foisey. That the minutes of the regular council meeting held July 12th, 2022, and special council meetings held July 26th, 2022, be adopted as circulated. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Any disclosures of pecuniary interest? There are none. There's no presentations or delegations that we're aware of. No, nope, not tonight. We'll move into minutes and reports of committees and boards. Planning advisory met on August 2nd. I was not present, but I'll let uh, Councillor Fwizzi, uh, as he chaired that meeting, speak on this, on, on about this. There were five applications and uh... <clears throat> Two of them were lot additions, which had to uh, occur at the same time. Okay. Those motions are coming forward uh, later in our package then. Fire department. So we haven't had any for a while. We're still waiting to get a meeting. Uh, we have a new fire truck and I think everything was so far so good on it. And it was a great acquisition, I believe. If you want to speak to it, Anne? On um, its safety without a spark plug really uh there's still chalk lines honestly on the chassis from uh when it was first built it only had 4500 kilometers on it uh made it back here safely uh two guys drove it back here um 
just waiting for it to be plated so that they can drive it. And the emissions test was 8.6, Councillor Legacy. <laughs> Everything Great. went fine. Great. Perfectly. One thing that I just noted from what I see, and it may not be accurate, but just from the expenses that are in the disbursements, did the members of the department that went to get the truck, did they at least claim uh, per diem? Yes, they did. Okay. Yes. Because they should have been compensated at least. Yes, that will show up on the uh, uh, next council agenda's approval report. Okay. Yeah. Good. Okay. Uh, recreation and fitness. Yeah, we did have a meeting uh, July 11th. Uh, we have uh, just talked about the summer camp. We have a new volunteer to help out with soccer. Uh, we're going to be running a clinic. On Wednesdays, I guess in August, uh, we talked about the Halloween parade. Renee Quentin will take charge of that again. Uh, we're waiting. We talked about a trade show. We're trying to get something going next spring, I guess, with uh, everything works out. Uh, paddle boat was returned to Steve on. I'm not sure which day, but yesterday. Yesterday, okay. Uh, movie in the park is this weekend, so. It's coming up. I guess the weather is going to be nice, mm -hmm. apparently. So it's all good. And then it's uh, at the uh, Bonfield Event Truck uh, Center. Uh, we're still talking about having a date night, card night, or whatever, starting in or or September 22nd. And this uh, flyer has been sent out. Then uh, we've talked about, uh, I guess we got a coming soup and chili in the Christmas parade set for December uh, 3rd. So. That's about it for that. Do you want to add anything? Uh, oh, you did well. Thank you. Thanks. Okay. Library. Meeting coming up in September. Okay. General government uh, met last uh, and rarely as the budget committee. And uh, the product of that is in our agenda tonight. Uh, both the um, operating budget for 2022 and the uh, capital budget outline without general specifics uh, attached to it for capital stuff. Police services, um, the contract that you see in your agenda tonight too is something that was under discussion a month or two ago uh, related to the OPP have give us the option to just extend our current contract for another two years. And as it's presented here tonight, that's probably the most feasible option and it allows the new council um, about a year and a half to get their feet under them about what policing services or whatever changes they might seek to make. There's there's limited change at any time that's uh, available to municipalities anyway. But having said that, the new Police Services Act with the provincial government only being um, proclaimed yesterday is expected now to, to come into a force and effect very soon, which will bring with it quite a number of changes related to um, police service boards and other things governing police services and the OPP in our particular case. Emergency management has not had a meeting and public works, um, public works manager is here. Just on my little drive, we've had some inclement weather uh, for the past little while, but on my way here, I know you're kind of being a construction supervisor of a splash pad and some playground equipment that are coming along quite nicely. Could you speak to that? Uh, sure. The rain has kept us very busy. I think uh, in two weeks, uh, you have to do a patrol after a massive event. I think I was out at five o'clock in the morning, maybe three times a week <laughs> for the last few weeks. It's been uh, some heavy rains. Uh, however, we are managing and we're not getting any flooding or any critical infrastructure loss. Uh, the playground kept us quite busy as the Public Works Department was charged with creating the area that it had to be set in. Uh, currently, they're putting the playground together and it's hopeful that it should be open by Friday um, if everything goes well. Uh, due to the cement shortage, timelines are being difficult to meet with the project at the waterfront. Uh, today, they did pour the cement pad, uh, which is a week behind date or a week behind schedule due to this, the shortage of cement. Uh, that has to set for 20 days before any 
plastics can be added to the, to the splash pad. So hopefully it's a warm December and then, or September and people get to enjoy it maybe before we have to put it away for the season. Um, same with the exercise equipment, due to the cement shortage, it's kind of everything's waiting for when cement can arrive. Uh, the dock still has to go in and they only have until September 15th to get that in there. So it'll be in on time. I noticed that there was actually lines painted. There's a underground hydro that goes under the lake right there. So it may become a challenge. Um, we did a little project kind of on the fly on sunny side. Uh, I found out last minute that our neighbors were resurfacing sunny side with single coat of uh, chip seal and we had that little problem spot that was right there at our border so in speaking with Antoine uh, two days before the contractor showed up we did a big dig out there to make sure that we had a smooth surface and we got a double coat just put right there at Sunnyside uh, number three Sunnyside and believe it or not the cold patch was 14 inches thick from trying to maintain that spot so I think that was a good move on the department to, to act on that. Uh, that took about a day's work, uh, digging that all out of there. Um, the grass cutting for roadsides will begin. I just wanna to mention to Councillor Legassi that we have been doing some hogweed maintenance this season. So we've been in Talon Lake, Pine Lake, McNutt Road, uh, Grand Desire, and we've been actually digging the hogweed out of the ground. So hopefully that rectifies matters. Uh, we did that maybe about a month ago. So there was no seed or anything at that time. There was no flowers. Uh, we've been getting a few phone calls, however, about the uh, milkweed that has sprouted out everywhere, uh, which is a monarch butterfly haven. Um, so there will be some discussion with our contractor in, the, in keeping that milkweed where we can, although it is blossomed everywhere. <laughs> I was just waiting for comments. No, she has a question. <laughs> okay. Yes, go ahead, Councilor uh, In In regards to the, uh, uh, it's not hogweed, it's um, uh, wild parsnip. In regards to those plants, there are some at the, where the corner of Grand Desert Road meets Boxwell Road. There's a, a bunch there and all along Boxwell Road. And I know those are in seed right now. Um, if they're cut, they're going to spread that seed right across, across its path. So uh, I'm not sure if that road should be cut this year or if it should wait till next year, but there's uh, an, an awful lot right, right where that turn is. And then uh, also, throughout Boxwell. So uh, it's your call, Anne, and I know I've heard good things that uh, that you've been digging them out, and and I'm really happy to hear that. I'm, I'm, and I thank you. Yeah. You're welcome. And as far as the milkweed is concerned, uh, I, I know it can be bothersome, but I do know that um, it, it's helpful for the mo monarchs too. So. Uh, most of the concerns with the milkweed is on Boxwell Road, so perhaps we can miss Boxwell Road in its entirety. We'll just ensure the entrances for driveways are done. That's okay. That sounds good. And right, right at that corner where Grand uh, Grand Desert, right on the corner of Grand Desert, where Boxwell starts on the uh, west side. Okay. Um, and that's about it for the report. I already talked about the fire department's uh, vehicle, so I'll get there. Okay, very good. Thank you. So we'll move then to, uh, I guess we'll clean up the reports of non-municipal committees and boards, and then we'll go to the motions of our committees. Non-municipal committees and boards, phenomenal. There's nothing that I'm aware of. Conservation Authority, their financial statements are in our package. Has there been a meeting? Um, yeah, no, we were on vacation. 
Uh, I, know, I know we were supposed to have vacation for council too, but we had a couple of special meetings, but uh, North Bay Mattawa Conservation Authority, we did have a vacation. So my next meeting will be at the end of this month, but you're right, there's an audited uh, financial statement in, pa in the package under information number 12 that you will see tonight. Okay, thank you. Castle Home, as everybody's aware, and can see driving by is under construction. And uh, in the media, and I was advised personally by uh, former CAO Lowry that uh, there's a levy reduction uh, coming our way based upon some uh, fortunate events that happened there in their budget. But um, I was speaking also today with uh, one of the board members, uh, Bob Corvo, and he was describing some of the uh, increased income and, and reduced cost that they found there. So that's, that's all good news all the way around. In our particular case, the, uh, the full 2.9% Castle Home budget uh, reduction is not being passed on 100% to the municipalities. There's only a portion of it. They're reserving some of it, which is fine. But uh, in our case, it, it's quite small. The, uh, the reduction that we'll be seeing is probably in the neighborhood of three or $4,000, but it's still a, a good gesture, I guess I'd say. So going, yes. Uh, Community nonprofit. It's not on there. Anymore. No, oh, okay. Sorry, go I'm ahead. Sorry. I'll add that to the uh, following agenda. Nonprofit housing, yes. So the community nonprofit seniors housing bond field reports the following legal documents have been dealt with. Personal Property Security Act registration, assignment of rents agreement with Quesadillas, notice of assignment of rents general at, at the land register, charge mortgage registration at the land register, clear certificate with the Sheriff of Territorial District of Nipissing at Bay, and a transfer at the land register from the business to the community nonprofit senior housing. And I looked at the estimated financial performance statement and the questions and answers draft are in the process of setting up a website and associated email. Since all the legal documents are in place can now proceed with the required permit applications. And on-site activities should be ramping up by the end of this month, and the completion would be in the spring of 2023. For the half hour I was there, because I have to, had to leave with these. Okay, thank you. So going back then to motions and committees, we're into planning. And the first one is B7 in 2022. I take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councillor Vinecourse, seconded by Councillor Corbett. First, the Planning Advisory Committee has recommended to Council that consent to application B7 2022, Mike and Lori Topolinski, be approved. Be it resolved that Council approves of this recommendation, along with the conditions and notes set out on the attached Decision of Approval Authority form. Any questions on this one? All in favor? Carried. Okay, and the next one, B8, 2022, uh, same applicants, different file. I take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councillor Foisey, seconded by Councillor Lagasse. Whereas the Planning Advisory Committee has recommended to Council that consent to application B8, 2022, Mike and Lori Topolinski be approved. We resolve that Council approves this recommendation along with the conditions and notes set out on the attached Decision of Approval Authority form. Any questions on this one? All in favor? Carried.
Next one is application B11, 2022, Rajad Deshane and Robert Deshane. I take a mover and a seconder for it. Move by Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor Lagasse. Whereas the Planning Advisory Committee has recommended to Council that consent application B11, 2022, Rajad Deshane and Robert Deshane be approved. Be it resolved that Council approves this recommendation along with the conditions and notes set out on the attached decision of approval authority form. Any questions on this one? All in favor? Carried. Next one, file B12, 2022, Reja and Joanne Deshane. I take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor Vinecore. Whereas the Planning Advisory Committee has recommended to Council that consent application B12, 2022, Reja and Joanne Deshane be approved. Be it resolved that Council approves of this recommendation, along with the conditions and notes set out on the attached decision of approval authority form. Any questions on this one? All in favor? Carried. Next one is application B13, 2022, Corey Nottingham. I take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councillor Foisey, seconded by Councillor Corbett. Whereas the Planning Advisory Committee has recommended to Council that consent application B13, 2022, Corey Nottingham be approved. It resolved that Council approves of this recommendation along with the conditions and notes set out on the attached decision of approval authority form. Any question? <clears throat> All in favor? Carry. So that concludes all our motions of committees. We're now, there's no notices of motion. So now we're into a stack of bylaws. First of which being 8.1, a first, second, and third reading, of bylaw 2022-30. And that's a bylaw to repeal bylaw 2022-5. Take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded by Councillor Corbett. First Council deems it necessary and expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw at this session. It hereby resolved that a bylaw to repeal bylaw 2022-5, appointing a clerk treasurer for the corporation, be read a first, second, and third time, passed in number 2022-30, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. Any questions? All in favor? Carry. Next one, 8.2, first, second, and third reading, bylaw 2022-31, and it's repealing bylaw 2022-15. I take a mover and a second of it. Move by Councilor Viancor, seconded by Councilor Corbett. First Council deems it necessary and expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw at this session. We hereby resolved that a bylaw to repeal bylaw 2022-15 delegating authority to the chief administrative officer during a lame duck period be read a first, second, and third time, passed to number 2022-31, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. Any questions? Yeah, from when to when is that lame duck period? 19th. Nomination day, August 19th, until 
after the election. Well, Thursday. until the new council sworn in, I guess. Two please. dates. Uh, the first session could happen August 19th. And then you could also have a lame duck set, lame duck session, uh, October 24th at the election until the new council would be sworn in. So there's two dates uh, where we could go into the lame duck period. Lame duck period for our viewers <clears throat> has nothing to do with the number of geese that are in the yard outside. <laughs> it's a period where if 60% of the council chooses not to run again, or for whatever reason, doesn't stand for election. The council is considered lame duck in that it no longer has the uh, authority to make major decisions. So there's uh, provisions in the municipal act where decisions worth over $50,000 or hiring and other such things of disposing of real estate, requiring real estate, things like that of significant importance um, that would normally fall to a council operating normally are handed to an individual officer of the corporation for to uh, administer during those periods. It's very rare that those occasions happen, but there is provision in the so-called lame duck period for if something uh, surprising happened and, and uh, action needed to occur, it could be done legally at least. So on that basis then, I have a mover and a seconder for the lame duck uh, thing, all in favor? <clears throat> Carried. Next one, 8.4. First, second, and third reading, bylaw 22-33, bylaw to establish tax ratios. During. You missed one. Did I skip one? Okay, 8.3 then. Yeah, first, yeah. second, and third reading. Uh, bylaw 22-32 being a bylaw to delegate authority during the lame duck period. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. We've taken it away and now we're handing it back to someone. I'll take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councillor Viancourt, seconded by Councillor Corbett. The bylaw to authorize the delegation of authority to the deputy clerk treasurer for certain acts during a lame duck period. We read a first, second, and third time passed in number 2022-32, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. Any questions? All in favor? <clears throat> Carried. Okay, now I'm to 8.4, which is 22-33, a bylaw to establish the tax ratios. I take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councilor Foisey, seconded by Councilor Corbett. First Council deems it is expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw this session. Be it hereby resolved that a bylaw for establishing tax ratios for the year 2022 be read a first, second, and third time, passed in number 2022-33, and that said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book and that this bylaw be placed on the municipal website for public information purposes. Any questions? All in favor? Carry. Eight 8.5, significant budget to adopt the 2022 operating and capital budgets where the tax rates have been established and take a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded by Councillor Vancourt. <clears throat> First Council deems it expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw this session. Be it hereby resolved that a bylaw to adopt the 2022 operating budget, including estimates of all sums required for the purposes of the municipality during the year 2022, and to establish the tax rates to be levied. We read a first, second, and third time, passed in number 2022-34, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book, and that this bylaw be placed on the municipal website for public information purposes. Any questions? All in favor? Carry. 
Five again. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's where I skipped the beat earlier. Bro. Okay. 8.5 again. It's actually, we'll call it 8.5 B. First, second, and third reading of bylaw 2022-36, bylaw to amend the OPP police services agreement I spoke of earlier. And in a nutshell, it's an extension of the current provisions for another two years. So take a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Viancourt, seconded by Councillor Corbett. First council deems it necessary and expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw this session. Be hereby resolved that a bylaw to amend bylaw 2018-38, being in agreement with the Ontario Provincial Police for Police Services, be read a first, second, and third time, passed and numbered 2022-36, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Eight point six, first, second, and third reading bylaw twenty two thirty seven to repeal bylaw nineteen ninety eight dash fourteen. I take a mover, a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded by Councillor Corbett. First Council deems it necessary and expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw this session. Be it hereby resolved that a bylaw to repeal bylaws 1995-18, 1998-14, 1998-15, and 2016-24, respectively appointing a weed inspector, animal control officer, bylaw enforcement officer, and chief building official for the corporation of the Township of Bonfield to be read a first, second, and third time passed to number 2022-37, and that the said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed with the seal of the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. Any questions? Yes, Councillor Legassi. Yes, I do have a question. Uh, in regards to uh, the memo that uh, he sent, uh, Doug sent number six of, uh, uh, correspondence and information, um, Doug has a list of 10. We have a list to uh, repeal only four. So his list was uh, Director of Planning and Development, Chief Building of, of Official, which is on this one, a Bylaw Enforcer of, Officer, which is in this, this uh, motion, a Property Standards Officer, it's not there, Animal Control Officer, it's there, Pound keepers not there. Weed inspector is there. Livestock valuer, secretary of police service board, and secretary of planning advisory committee. These are not there. So there's six that are not there. Is there a reason? Is because we already put someone else in? Uh, it's coming later in the meeting. Uh, there's a pre-prepared motion uh, removing a number of those titles by resolution as opposed to bylaw. So that will take care of all the everything in his list. Yes, I've been okay. assured by the clerk that that's the case. Yes. Sounds good to me. Thank you. Okay. But uh, bylaws are repealed by bylaws, and the other ones were motions, so that's where they'll be later in the agenda. All right. Thank you. Okay. Okay. And just. For everybody's information, you're interested in the weed inspector job. Yes, right? I am. Okay, good. Any other questions? All in favor? Oh, you had a question? Oh, no. no? Okay. No. <laughs> Carried. Who, who moved and seconded? Uh, moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded okay. by Councillor Corbett. Thank you. Okay, that uh, cleans up a big pile of bylaws. We're moving now to disbursements. I would take a mover. And a seconder to throw it on the table and then we can take any questions. Moved by Councillor Viancourt, seconded by Councillor Park. I would open the floor to questions on the disbursements. Yes, Councillor Legasse. Page one, no, page two. So page one of four. So I have a few questions. Um, one would be, uh, The curtain and filter, uh, the amounts for this one and the 
Centennial Park gazebo roof uh, and other other things. Um, did this go within the budget? Or are we right on track? Who could answer that? I'm not sure, Mayor McLaren. Matt, is your car, could you speak to that? Uh, the rink curtain has been completed and uh, I scrambled because I actually have a couple thousand left of the funding and it's 100% funded. So I guess we don't need the other $3,000. <laughs> that's buying the sign, that's putting the curtains up, that's paying for the labor, that's putting everything's complete. So, uh, and we're still way under budget for the waterfront development project by probably around 400,000. We All still right. have lots of money to go. Thank you. Uh, I did speak yeah. to Andre regarding one of the uh, Christy Russell uh, legal matters, and that was regarding the zoning bylaw. It's not mentioned what it is, but it's re regarding the zoning bylaw for the shore road allowance. So he worked on that project. Uh, so I got clarification on that. And also um, the David King, Quizzy versus McLaren inquiry. So I did inquire about this also. This one cost, and it's in our agenda. And um, again, I'll, I'll 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 let it come up as it went, when it comes up in our in our uh, package. But this amount five thousand two hundred and fifty four fifty interests me because there have been a number of these cases, a number that has affected the. Uh, the township taxpayers. Um, in 2022, we had $16,000 worth of this, this, these investigations. Terrible. 2021, $32,000 came up. That is $48,000 of legal fees that we paid to have petty and I'll consider it petty investigations done and brought to, to the taxpayers of Bonfield. I, I am not happy, not at all. I have another question and that's just a statement. There's no question on that one. I'm sorry, Mary McLaren, but I do have another one um, in regards to uh, um, I believe it's, yes, page four of four. The, um, the cost of the uh, summer camp, 4,057.70. Uh, is, that, is that the total amount? Is there any, any more coming off of that one or that we should be watching out for? Uh, that is, um... Reptiles Adventure Camp supply the staffing and volunteer. So we reimburse him. And most of those um, expenses, we the recreation committee does fundraising to help offset the cost of those. Uh, we did t-shirt sales this year. There's uh, the New Year's Eve dance that we did two years ago. There's funds left from that. We get donations from Case Populaire. Uh, we also um, charge a fee for registration. So most of that uh, breaks out even at the end of the summer camp session. Right. And that's the end of my uh, question rant. Thank you, Mayor McLaren. Okay. Any other questions related to the disbursements? Okay. I have a mover and a seconder. Moved by Councillor Vinecourt, seconded by Councillor Corbett that the following disbursements be approved as prepared. All departments under APO 6111 for a subtotal of $319,724.29 and payroll batches 1228 through to 1235 amounting to $60,547.14 resulting in a total disbursement of $380,271.43. Last call for questions. All in favor? <clears throat> Carried.
Moving into correspondence and information. The first one letter from Christine Rose regarding reptiles in the park and summer camp program. There's a pre-prepared motion related to acknowledging receipt of the letter. Is there a mover and a seconder for it? Moved by Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor Vinefor. The council accepts the letter submitted from Christine Rose regarding concerns of reptiles in the park on Canada Day and participation of reptile adventure camp during the Bonfield summer camp session. Any questions? All in favor? Carrie? Can I ask a procedural question? Pardon me for... We, we typically don't pass motions to accept correspondence. Is there a special reason why we did in this instance? I guess um, part of the correspondence from the Roses was that they had written to us on numerous occasions and received no response. So this is a, or in their opinion, they received no response. So this is a very firm acknowledgement that we've received their correspondence and have considered it. That's what I would take it as being. Fair enough, thank you. Okay. Item two, similar subject. It's a letter from Steve Featherstone in response to Christine Rose's concerns regarding reptiles in the park on Canada Day. And it uh, pretty much does the same thing. It just acknowledges his response. Is there a mover and a seconder for that? Moved by Councillor Viancourt, seconded by Councillor Corbett. That Council accepts the letters from Steve Featherstone addressing Christine Rose's concerns of reptiles in the park on Canada Day and participation of Reptile Adventure Camp during the Bonfield Summer Camp session, and that a copy of the said letters be forwarded to Christine Rose. Any questions? Yes, uh, Councillor Legasti. Steve's letter does answer a lot of my questions that I had at the last council meeting in regards to insurance and legal responsibilities. So he does mention that he has insurance and he's listed uh, Bonfield Township as as uh, one of the um, uh, the companies that he he's uh, working for. I did not see anything about legal responsibilities. So. When it comes to something happening, if it should happen, not not, I'm not saying that it could happen about his reptiles or anything like that. But if something should happen out of the ordinary, who's responsible for for that? Is his insurance taking care of that? Or uh, we were so, I asked for um, legal advice from our legal team. I don't know if if uh, staff did that. I don't believe there's been any legal opinion sought, but uh, what normally happens in other times when things such as this come up is the actual certificate from the insurance company is provided yes. to council. So if you could call- so Provided to council? Yeah, okay. if you wouldn't mind, please. Usually in it, it spells out pretty clearly the parameters of how it flows. It has been uh, provided to our uh, insurance provider, so they do have a copy. Okay. Okay. So they're aware. Our yes. insurance company has been made aware then, yes. Councillor Lagasse, if that helps. Yeah, that helps. Thank you. Okay. Okay. So on that note, then, uh, I don't believe we've called the vote on this. Uh, I'll read it again. Moved by Councillor Vinecourt, seconded by Councillor Corbett, that Council accepts the letters submitted from Steve Featherstone addressing Christine Rose's concerns of reptiles in the park on Canada Day and participation of reptile adventure camp during the Bonfield summer camp session. And that a copy of said letters be forwarded to Christine Rose. Any other questions? All in favor? <clears throat> Carried. Okay. Um, looks like two and three were both covered by that motion. They both speak to responses to the uh, concerns that were raised. Item four is a memo from the bylaw enforcement officer regarding animals in the township owned parks. Um, having reviewed that quite comprehensive bylaw, it 
it speaks to uh, it, it's a, one of our older bylaws, and it speaks to the future is now our present. In that it, it says uh, quite a bit about keeping dogs away from things like splash pads and other such things. So um, it specifies a distance and so forth. So that's good. Um, but it also his report um, makes clear that if council wants to make changes to the bylaw that they would need to uh, to direct adjustment to that bylaw by some way. So the motion that's before me is just to accept the report from the bylaw enforcement officer. Is there a mover and a seconder for it? Moved by Councillor Vinecourt, seconded by Councillor Corbett. The council accepts the report from the bylaw enforcement officer regarding animals in the township owned parks and that a copy of the report and bylaw 2013-9 be forwarded to Christine Rose. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Next one is from the uh, Secretary of the <clears throat> Recreation and Fitness Committee, also speaking to those same uh, issues. Is there an, is this so the report can be forwarded to Ms. Rose, is there a mover and a seconder for it? Moved by Councillor Vinecor, seconded by Councillor Corbett. The Council accepts the report from the Secretary of the Recreation and Fitness Committee regarding Christine Rose's concerns, and that a copy of the report be forwarded to Christine Rose. Any questions? All in favor? Carry. As mentioned earlier, there was a request from a retired employee to rescind some of his uh, designations and appointments that were made by motion of council. I'd now take a mover and a seconder to repeal those appointments. Moved by Councillor Vinecourt, seconded by Councillor Foisy. Whereas Doug LaPlante is no longer employed by the Township of Bonfield, therefore the following motions should be rescinded. Resolution number 10 of September 10th, 1996, appointment of a livestock valuer. Resolution number seven, August 12th, 1997, giving the title of Director of Planning and Development. And resolution number eight of March 12th, 2022, assigning officer identification number for bylaw enforcement. I guess I would add that uh, be it resolved that council agrees with this recommendation. <laughs> Uh, yes, Councillor Lagasse. You had a question? You're yeah. muted at the moment. We've knocked off a couple of them, but we still have a few more. Um, the Director of Planning and Development, I, th I think you did say that one. Yes. Uh, the Planning Advisory Committee. He's not on that. They will, there's two more motions to come. Yeah, there's another one coming. This motion doesn't cover all the appointments. It removes oh. the secretaries in the next motion. Okay, so this one's for the planning and development and the livestock valuer. And which other one? Livestock valuer, title of director of planning and development right. and the officer ID number for bylaw enforcement. Okay. And the appointment as a livestock valuer. Okay, Thank any you. other questions related to this one? All in favor? Carried. Staying with item six then, there's a second motion to that. Did I take a mover and a seconder for it? It's related to the appointments as secretaries. Moved by Councillor Lagasse, seconded by Councillor Corbett. Whereas Doug LaPlante has retired, therefore the Council of the Township of Bonfield recommends to the Bonfield Police Service Board that Doug LaPlante's appointment as secretary of the board be rescinded and that a new secretary be appointed. We had appointed a new secretary, but uh, he's no longer employed with us either. So we'll have to revisit that issue again in the future. Any questions? 
All in favor. Carried. Next motion. Uh, you had a question, Councilor Lagasse? Yes. Pound keepers left and property standards officer. Okay. I have another motion here related to uh, Planning Advisory Committee Secretary. Okay. She'll tidy up, tidy up one more of them. Take a mover and a seconder for it. Moved by Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor Foisey. Whereas Doug LaPlante was appointed as Secretary of the Planning Advisory Committee, and whereas Doug LaPlante has retired and is no longer employed by the Township of Bonfield. Therefore, the Council of the Township of Bonfield recommends to the Planning Advisory Committee that Doug LaPlante's appointment as Secretary be rescinded and that a new Secretary be appointed. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Now, because you're diligently keeping score, how many are left of our uh, checklist? Two. 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 Which are pound keeper, which covers uh, animal control officer. And property standards officer. Oh, that, that one comes underneath the animal control officer. All right, that makes sense. And what about the property standard officer? Does that go that, underneath uh, the, bylaw, the bylaw enforcement officer? Yes. Okay, that makes sense. All right, and no more questions. Okay, thank you. Item seven, report related to our neighboring Calvin Township and a development that's happening on their side of the border. Person wanting to open up a uh, presently unmaintained road allowance to get a building permit there and there needs to be a formal agreement for that process to happen. Calvin Township maintains all of Mount Pleasant Road. Uh, in trade with us, we maintain Bondola Road, um, which is for the most part all in their township. So it's a trade-off that we uh, have with them long-standing. But this agreement is necessary for them to uh, enter into agreement with Mr. Farmer related to piece of road. Is there a question or I take a mover for that? Okay, moved by Councillor Viancourt, seconded by Councillor Foisey. Whereas the Corporation of the Municipality of Calvin wishes to enter into a road use agreement with Dwight Farmer on a boundary road, Mount Pleasant Road. And whereas the Township of Bonfield shares this boundary road with the Municipality of Calvin. And whereas the Municipality of Calvin is seeking approval of the road use agreement between the Municipality of Calvin and Dwight Farmer from the Council of the Township of Bonfield. Whereas after review of the agreement by the Manager of Planning and Development and the Public Works Manager for the Township of Bonfield, it is agreed that the road use agreement is satisfactory and meets liability requirements that would be of concern to the Township of Bonfield. And furthermore, if at such time the road requires maintenance from a municipality, Schedule A of Bylaw 2019-26 will be amended to add this portion of Mount Pleasant Road to be the responsibility of the Corporation of the Municipality of Calvin. Be it hereby resolved the Council of the Township of Bonfield endorses the road use agreement between the Corporation of the Municipality of Calvin and Dwight Farm. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Next one is a memo from the Manager of Planning and Development. Uh, same subject we've dealt with. Item 9, Natalie Lozon, Lauren Hazard, regarding a shore road allowance license application. I'll take a mover and a seconder for it. Councillor Corbett, second by Councillor Vinecore. Whereas Natalie Lozon and Lauren Hazard have submitted an application for license to use a portion of the shore road allowance on their property at Cahill Lane, Concession 7, Part Lot 8, Registered Plan 36R8097, Part 1, Parcel 27411, Nivising, to license two existing docks and a removable extension of alumina docking on the township's shore road allowance. Whereas the Manager of Planning and Development has reviewed this application and recommends to Council 
to approve Natalie Lozon and Lauren Hazard's proposal to license a portion of the shore road allowance as per the attached application with a condition that all permits be obtained from the North Bimatawa Conservation Authority, Oceans and Fisheries, and the Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry, if required, prior to issuing the license. Be it hereby resolved that Council approves this recommendation. Any questions? <clears throat> Councillor Legassi. Um, this, this would have been a nice one that uh, Sabrina would have if she could have attended this meeting, uh, several concerns I have regarding this application. The main one is there's a lot of controversy going on down at Cahill Lane. Um, if this is keeping in line with what's been going on, then then I'm for it. I you know I approve it. But if it's not in line, and and I see by the the map, it's not, not a very well drawn map. Um, so I had a hard time to understand the application. There's several reasons why I have concerns about this application. But if, uh, if the planning um, development officer decides that uh, she recommends this application, then I think I'm all right with it. But again, if it's keeping in line with all the other decisions that council has made down on Cahill Lane and other, other shoreline properties. Is it a, in your opinion, does it relate to the argument that occurs regularly about the straight line method and whose shoreline is in front of who? Is that what it is? That's made? right. That's okay. right. And also um, not just this particular property but there's others on north shore that were discussed same same thing same scenario is this going to lead uh, council into uh, another bees nest or or um just by the way the motion read it, it appears that the docks are existing already and they're just trying to license them now it says existing here on the uh motion at least so it wouldn't be a new construction that's going in there unless it's happened just recently. A removable extension. Any additional to dock will be removable aluminum sections. So the additional existing dock also, any addition to dock will be removable. And I, I don't know that it's very vague, this application. Okay. May I just comment? Yes. Sorry. So. Um, just so you're aware, Councillor Legassi, the license is not issued until we get approval from the Conservation Authority. So we don't like we don't have any comments from when we go through planning and we have a an application. Usually we wait till we have. Uh, a response from the North Bay Matawa Conservation Authority and other whoever whoever we uh, contact before we can do our due diligence and decide. So do, do we not in these applications uh, ask for their comments? Yes, we do, but the, the process is reversed. We actually uh, if the mo if this is approved by us, then they submit an application to the conservation authority. They do um, the research, and if they allow it, they tell us that yes, we can issue the license. It's that's standard with all of the licensing agreements that we've done. The uh, we basically pre-approve the license for them to go to the effort of applying to the Conservation Authority, Oceans and Fisheries, Ministry of Natural Resources and Forestry prior to us issuing the license. But then it, it empowers the staff here to issue the license once they've received whatever documents or whatever come back from there, which has been the case for many others. Okay. 
Yes, uh, Councillor Corbett. What's the lifespan of the license? Does it live with the title or does it expire? It's with the title. It's with the property. So this will live forever if yes. approved and licensed. Yeah. <clears throat> so the, it's recommended to uh, by the planning and development to review the application and recommend to, to approve. So I don't see what the uh, what the issue is. Well, it, it didn't go through planning, but it did go well, it through our right uh, manager of planning. Manager, yeah, it went through. The and manager. development has reviewed this application and recommends the council to approve it. Yep. Proposal to license a portion of the road. I mean, okay. I'd, and if you say it in the uh, conservation comes after, well, that don't see the issue. Yeah, everything is approved yeah. by them, and then they so. uh, recommend for us to issue the license or it has come before that where they denied it. So then we don't issue a license. Okay. Okay, any other questions? All in favor? Carried. <clears throat> Code of Conduct, Officer Foisey versus myself. Take a mover and a seconder to accept the report. Councillor Vinecourt, seconded by <clears throat> Councillor Corbett. But the report titled Code of Conduct Complaint, Councillor Eric Foisey versus Mayor Randall McLaren, the Township of Bondfield Final Report, July 29th, 2022, submitted by the Integrity Commissioner David King, be accepted as submitted. Any questions? All in favor? Uh, is that a question, Councillor Lagasse? Yes, okay. This is exactly what I was talking about during the disbursements. Um, the conclusion, the conclusion says it all. I have found that the respondent did not contravene the code of conduct. Says it right there, one sentence. For the amount of money that we're paying for these, and I'll call it petty, it's, uh, we should be picking our uh, bites a little bit um, carefully and using our, our taxpayers' money a little bit better than that. Thank you. Any other questions? All in favor? Carried. Capital budget. Take a mover and a seconder to accept our capital budget overview that we saw in our budget meeting. Moved by Councillor Viancourt, seconded by <laughs> Councillor Corbett. Whereas the General Government and Finance Committee recommended that the 2022 capital budget be approved as prepared, we hereby resolve that Council agrees with this recommendation. Any questions? All in favor? Carried. Just as a point of note for Council, um, one thing that I would ask us to, first of all, restrict our newly empowered deputy clerk and our lame duck powers. And our council is, uh, we really need to give some thought to that uh, software thing. Every time I talk to anybody in municipal stuff, they're saying, what software are you going with for your dinosaur baker system? So some of them have ridiculous um, annual fees. Mm -hmm like 200,000 a year of annual fees. So we have to be careful what we buy. Yes, uh, there will be a um, request for quotes going out uh, next week. I was waiting for the budget to be approved and then staff will go through the, uh, the applications that we receive and then make a recommendation to council. Good, okay. Going then to uh, item 12, hiring a part-time municipal office clerk. Take a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Viancourt, seconded by Councillor Corbett. The uh, motion is pretty open-ended in that there's uh, has been a competition underway and is closed, I guess, for Office Clerk 2. <coughs> Our uh, former Office Clerk 2 left for full-time employment. And the interviews need to be held to select a candidate. And they're um, taken by this motion that uh, the deputy clerk would like some assistance in that regard. So is there anybody interested in being part of the interview team? 
questions or volunteers? No, volunteers. Okay. Okay. I mean, sorry, I'm a volunteer. I don't know if you Okay. We're going back to the old days of council being in the kitchen, but. Uh, well, I see that point, Your Worship, if I could. Go ahead. Uh, I, I agree. I mean, I, I think it's actually important where uh, council gets to the point where we recognize we have one employee uh, being the CAO and then allowing our department heads to actually hire their staff accordingly uh, and uh, walk through all the HR processes. So um, I, while I understand we're short staffed and if that's the case that we find ourselves in now, the needing the extra support, I'm happy to do that. I don't think that this should be our practice moving forward. So. Yeah. Yes. Sir. Um, the only reason why I brought this up is um, if we had a CAO, the CAO would have uh, done that probably with my guidance as well. But with the lack of CAO, I wasn't sure how council uh, wanted me to proceed. So um, I brought this motion up and uh, let council decide how we go from here until we actually get a new CAO. Okay. Uh, Councillor Legassi, you had a question? Yes, I do. It's regarding the special meeting that uh, uh, Councillor Fuzzy, Councillor Corbett, and Councillor Abeakul had regarding uh, hiring of. Can you explain that motion for me, please? I, I did see the uh, YouTube, but there was no explanation. It was read, but there was no explanation of that motion. Could it be explained for me, please, so that I can understand? Uh, the hiring process that we're going to, to do without the CAO now. Yes, uh, so the motion uh, speaks to the fact that council, where where council's involvement is needed or the, the councillors, mayor or CEO's involvement is needed in any HR practices. Uh, so where it's required that it would be done by resolution of council. Where it's not required, quite frankly, is where we delegate that authority to our department heads to be able to actually manage within their departments. So uh, again, the typical model that you would see within a municipality is uh, the CAO is typically the, viewed as the uh, employee of the council. Uh, and we hold that the CAO accountable for not only their actions, but the actions of the staff and the municipality as a whole. But uh, really the, the purpose is to not have uh, any of our staff really feel that they are reporting to more than one entity. So you can imagine if our deputy clerk uh, has to report to the CAO and the CAO and the municipality or in the council uh, has a difference of opinion. Uh, if that person has to uh, be accountable to both simultaneously, it actually leads to a terrible work environment. So the idea is just to try and streamline accountabilities throughout the municipality. Okay, but it, I, I don't. I still don't understand the motion, and I. I <laughs> um, excuse me. I I, I don't under, I still don't understand. And, but anyway. well, just just to further the explanation. Um, for example, under that motion that we passed the minutes of here earlier this evening, um, does the manager of public works remain the ability to hire and fire within her department? Yes. Does it speak to that? It says where council is required to be involved. It does. Okay. Was that your understanding that you retain the ability to, to uh, discipline or whatever else you need to do? There? Okay. My understanding is that through a motion of council, I may be directed. Other than that, I... Well... Like it would be like, you know, if... Councillor Corbett calls me and says, hey, you need to cut the grass. And then Councillor Valancourt calls and says, hey, you need to be creating the roads. And then Councillor Foise calls and says, hey, you need to be uh, uh, raking goose poop at the beach. Like, how do I manage to take all these orders and still manage my department effectively? Right. Is my belief as to, so mm -hmm. like if we need direction, it would be direction as council as a whole not uh, each individual councillor directing us. Yeah, well, as, as the motion 
kind of reads though, and that's everything is subject to interpretation. It basically puts the purview of hiring and firing within the, the full of counsel, which if you're putting it within the full domain of counsel, you're removing it from the staff that are presently in place. So uh, I would take it that if you're seeking to hire a new individual in your department, it, it needs a motion of counsel at this point in time, as it reads. Uh, I would argue it doesn't because it, uh, it does stay in the motion where counsel uh, is required uh, to be involved. And uh, I don't think counsel is required to be involved in the hiring and firing of uh, any other staff other than the CIO. And there again, you could split that interpretation where counsel is required to be involved. Is that a statement or is that a, you know, is counsel required to be involved? Shouldn't have to be, but that statement says where counsel is required to be involved. <laughs> so you could, you could take it either direction. You can take it as a statement or you can take it as a as a description. Yes, uh, Councillor Lagasse. In the past, and this is where the um, the training of Fred, uh, Fred and Nigel comes in handy. Uh, I've taken several, several one of those workshops. Uh, I'm not sure who else has taken those workshops, but I tell you, it's well worth the workshop. <laughs> Anyone that's on council should be going to these workshops and 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 um, finding out how how to write up motions and how to prepare them. And I would like to know the motions that we've been doing that we've been passing are prepared by staff. These are knowledgeable people that we hire to and and have the training to have the tools to create these these motions so that we can understand them clearly. If they cannot, we have we usually have a lawyer, the municipal lawyer help us with these wordings. That motion is still, I still do not understand the motion. From the training that Nigel and Fred mm -hmm. Dean gave to me, I don't think they would understand it either. I think it would they would. Be interesting. Yes, uh, we're straying a long ways away here yeah. from selecting an office for two, but nonetheless, one last uh, question from Councillor Sharp. Sure. Uh, as Councillor Lagasse will recall when I uh, put my name forward to be on council, I actually have taken the municipal, municipal administration program from the AMCTO, which is the governing body or the guidance body of uh, municipality. So I'm well aware of how to write uh, various bylaws and uh, resolutions. Uh, I will also just state that not only did I uh, look to draft uh, this resolution with fellow council members, uh, it actually had some consultation from other clerks and other municipalities uh, to ensure that it uh, was a sound document and uh, all feedback that we received was uh, accounted for and, and in that uh, motion, so. Okay. So um, coming back to our motion on the table here, uh, and because we've delved right into the swamp of HR, I'm gonna raise an issue after we deal with this motion related to the um, clerical assistance at the, at the medical center, because it's of urgent uh, HR attention and it's not on the agenda, but I, I want to table it anyway. But uh, back to this motion, moved by Councillor Viancourt, seconded by Councillor Corbett, Whereas the position of office clerk two needs to be filled and whereas interviews need to be held to select a candidate. Therefore, council authorizes the following, Councillor Corbett and Councillor Foisey. And myself. And, and the deputy clerk. To perform interviews and select a candidate for the position of office clerk two. Any questions? <clears throat> All in favor? Carried. Now, uh, because I blurted it out, um, we have a shortage of assistance at the medical center. The medical center has always been a difficult entity to run in that uh, under our contract with the Ministry of Health, uh, we get funded to supply, correct me whenever I stray wrong here, Deputy Clerk, but we get funded to supply clerical assistance over there. The ministry directly pays the doctor, but in our bundle of money that we get from the ministry, they pay for the overhead, 
and the clerical assistants. Confusion arises with the doctor of the day of exactly who the employer is of that clerical assistance over there. But presently, uh, today, as of Monday, um, our receptionist over there is off for six weeks. And the doctor has communicated to me over the past 10 days, please find me some help because I'm heavily booked for the next two weeks. And beyond that, he'd still appreciate some help, but at, at right now, he's been left in the lurch of uh, clearing the voicemail, even changing the greeting, just to say it's not being monitored, prescription renewal, faxes and things like that. I know Dr. Steinberg very well, and he's much like myself in that modern technology and the fancy office equipment that we have now. He's a bit leery to uh, meddle in it in something as important as a medical office. So, and he reminds me regularly, he has his own domain and lane that he stays in, and that's care of the patients, the clerical side of it, he relies very heavily on his receptionist. So the question I'm throwing out here for this council now that wades heavily into HR issues is, could we reassign one of our office staff members here for an hour or two a day for the next while uh, to at least check the voicemails and print off the prescription renewals? Is there anybody that we could send over there for a little while every day? Um, the only one would be Santana as uh, there's only Jeff, Jess and myself here. And to lose her for an hour at this time of the year is uh, not doable. So um, the What's other the office hours. At the... I, to be honest, and in the situation, I think any time during the day is better than the nothing he has right now. <laughs> so uh, that's where we're at. Sure. So she, she wants to work more anyway. So we could. And she could fulfill those obligations, like just retrieve the voicemails, maybe respond to them, uh, or at least make the you know the little handwritten what it's about, and uh, prescription renewals, either print them off or whatever those type of thing. I, I would see it as two hours. Is the doctor of. able to show her what to do? No, that's the problem. Oh. And the passwords and so on, um, who holds them is another question. So. Uh, we may need to reach out to our employee and say, what are the passwords um, so that we can move forward there on some things, whether we hold them here in file or not. No, we so. have nothing that would all be with the current employee. Well, we'll have to try and bridge that uh, gap and obtain that information then if at all possible. So is the secretary coming back in six weeks? Yeah. So but in the meantime, uh, it was kind of an abrupt departure. We're stuck with the uh, mm -hmm. doctor trying to take care of our patients uh, with one arm tied behind his back. And, and he's quite embarrassed by the fact that he can't um, do the full job. Uh, he knows there's information being in the system, but he can't retrieve it. So that, that's where we're at right now. Yes. Well, I just, it, to the doctor's defense, I actually appreciate the fact that he's knowledgeable on health things. Uh, not necessarily an expectation that he would be knowledgeable on the uh, administrative side. Uh, would it be appropriate for us to just leave it with staff with their encouragement of counsel to say, if at all possible, if there's staff that uh, you could uh, seek to uh, supply support? Uh, I don't know. I mean, obviously, you guys have to look at workloads and, and request staff's time and availability as it is now, if it's going to be in addition to their existing workloads. So... Just speaking we'll see what can do. as community mm -hmm. advocacy, mm -hmm. I, I would think ahead of us printing the tax bills, <laughs> a couple hours a day, this is a higher urgency uh, because uh, I don't care what news channel you turn on right now, the um, shortage of health uh, professionals is a chronic issue. And the last thing I want to do is have a doctor throw up his hands in discouragement and say, I don't need Bonfield anymore. I'm out of here. <laughs> so um, I concur. that's, that's yeah. why this is, I think the highest priority we should deal with. Right now. 
yes. Okay, okay. We'll get it message received. <laughs> Very good. Yeah. I will pass on said message to frustrated doctor, <laughs> and I appreciate the uh, reassurance you've given me this evening. So I can go to my appointment on Thursday. <laughs> <laughs> Door might be locked, but okay. <laughs> don't, don't ask for it by fax. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're down to um, information. There's quite a bit of information there, all from nice municipalities all over Ontario uh, for your reading and enjoyment. The audited financial statements from the Conservation Authority are also in there and uh, it could be reviewed. And the Township of East Ferris with their Let's Remember Adam campaign. Uh, we were one of the municipalities that was a lead on that at one point in time, and we still have uh, quite a number of signage around related to it, so that's something to bring attention to. There's no new business that I'm aware of. Kelsey Shank, uh, unfinished business, there's no report for this meeting, and there's no addendum. So it looks like we've made it to uh, confirmatory bylaw. I take a mover and a seconder for that. Moved by Councillor Legacy, seconded by Councillor Corbett. That was a uh, moving and not a question, uh, Councillor Legassi. Okay. I'll have a question after. <laughs> oh, okay. So a motion moved by Councillor Legassi, seconded by Councillor Corbett, whereas council deems it expedient to pass three readings of the following bylaw at this session. Be it hereby resolved that a bylaw to confirm the proceedings of council from July 12, 2022 to August 9, 2022. We read a first, second, and third time, passed to number 2022-35, and that said bylaw be signed by the mayor and clerk, sealed to seal the corporation, and be engrossed in the bylaw book. Any questions? <clears throat> All in favor? Carry. I believe that's. Oh, yes, your question that I forgot about already. Please it's not go a question. ahead. It's not a question. There's an event coming up. It's the fall fair. I just wanted to to let to let okay. everybody know, and if. Uh, you can come and join us Saturday and Sunday. We have really good events, and uh, you might see me with my little mini. You never know on Sunday. <laughs> okay. Yes, uh, Councilor Corbett. Uh, and just to add to that, I believe that we have a new pharmacist in town who's uh, invited the community to a barbecue between noon and two this Saturday. This Saturday. This Saturday. Yep. So that's uh, good news for new problems. Just for clarity, is it still Prabir? Yes. Okay. So he's new, but he's been here a while. It's what trying to promote saying. the pharmacy. Yeah, he feels good. that the community doesn't know where he is. So I'm he's having a little. Totally on side with that. If yeah. you were a stranger driving around this town trying to find our pharmacy, you would be hard pressed to locate it because there's no signage there that says pharmacy in mm -hmm. any way, shape, or form. And we need to correct mm -hmm. that because that is a prominent little corner there. So. Um, just in conversation because of that, uh, uh, Secretary of Parks and Recreation, and I've had quite a few discussions on how we can get some kind of nice signage, uh, get the community involved, or they have like little two by three signs that kind of go around the map of Bonfield, uh, pointing out like where Brother Glenn's store is, where the pharmacy is, things like that. So it's still nice and neat and tidy, and it kind of creates a good atmosphere for the township where we don't have large billboard signs for certain businesses. Uh, so that's a, an idea for some funding we were looking into at the beginning of this meeting. There's also the $3,000 from your curtains. Yes. That, that I'm, <laughs> well, but I'm quite confident that the parties involved there would shine right. favorably upon Maybe. using that yeah. for community betterment. Yes. Um, and the one last thing, uh, the AMO conference starts on the 14th. And just for clarity, my accommodations are dealt with, but I get confirmations for other people's. Yes. Uh, so they should be canceled or whatever. No, so. you have none. You are to take his. Oh, well, I already have mine staying in one spot and not having to move every second day. You made yours? Yeah. Okay, I will cancel the other ones. Okay, because they all have that provision okay. in them. So, okay. Because there was two days at one hotel and yes. another day at another. Okay, so please get that. But I'm getting the confirmations for all kinds of them. So just cancel them please okay because mine i made separately so you can cancel it if you so <laughs> just so we're canceling the right ones here that's all okay, okay good <clears throat> and who all is going to uh to kelser the and yourself uh, okay 
All right. So then, if there's nothing else for the good of this meeting, I take a mover and a seconder to adjourn. Moved by Councillor Corbett, seconded by Councillor Vinecore, that this meeting adjourn at 8.22 p.m. All in faith. Carried and thank you. I have to thank the buyers. I want to talk again. Good night, Em. Oh, good night. Good night. <laughs> <laughs> good night. Have a good evening, everyone. Bye. Yeah. Good night, everybody.